There are already tons of comparisons on a day to day basis between American politics and The Handmaid's Tale. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna talk about this story and you can draw whatever conclusions you want. And it has to do with um, a female journalist who was attempting to do a ride along on a political candidacy who found herself running up against some particular religious based opposition to her being there. So this is Larison Campbell of Mississippi Today who wrote, in recent weeks, in an attempt to better inform readers about candidates in the upcoming Republican gubernatorial primary, Mississippi Today has asked to shadow each contender seeking the GOP nomination. Two candidates agreed, they note. The other candidate, State Representative Robert Foster, declined, however, because I am a woman. Now, lest you believe that that's just her assuming that's why, no, it was very clear. Colton Robison, Foster's campaign director, said a male colleague would need to accompany this reporter on an upcoming 15 hour campaign trip because they believe the optics of the candidate with a woman, even a working reporter, could be used in a smear campaign to insinuate an extramarital affair. This despite my, Larison Campbell's, offering to wear a Mississippi Today press badge in plain view at all times. And so, the only reason you think that people will think I'm having an improper relationship with your candidate is because I'm a woman, she says, and she's 100% right. The campaign told her they simply can't risk it. So think about that. This is not like living at his place for a few months or something. This is going on a one to two day trip, identified as a member of the press, probably surrounded by other members of the press at official events, and their argument is that because there might be trackers, these people who go along from rival campaigns and film what's going on, that they would take a photo that by its very nature, because it involves him, a man, and Larison Campbell, a woman, that would tank their candidacy. And they go back and forth with, with members of the campaign saying, we just, we wouldn't have, to, the primary's too soon, we wouldn't have time to respond to it, it would just wreck us. Now that would be horrible if that was their actual reasoning. But I don't know that that is actually their entire reasoning. Now they're gonna continue with that for a little bit, but wait until Robert Foster himself gets involved. He talks about it in a slightly different way. So first you have that campaign director saying, uh, perception is everything, we're so close to the primary. If trackers were to get a picture and they put a mailer out, we wouldn't have time to dispute it. And that's why we have to be careful. Now, look, is it possible? that campaigns are so dirty these days that they would just blatantly make up a fake um, affair. Yeah, that's possible. I would argue it's probably a bigger issue in Republican primaries because those are the sorts of candidacies that do that. That's a huge issue that you might wanna fight against Robert Foster uh, when you get into office. But that's not the real reason. I mean, we know who this guy is, we know what drives his politics. I wanna give you just a brief taste and then we'll get into his response to this controversy. So he'd previously tweeted in November of last year, anyone who votes Dem in 18 is either ignorant or evil. There is no excuse for supporting killing babies or open borders. If that offends you, I'll pray for you, but I won't apologize. Switch parties and vote rep or continue to support the destruction or our nation and vote socialist Dem. So there you have an awesome mix that really is the Republican Party in the modern era. It's this weird mix of sort of quasi religious sentiment that's applied only to conservative principles, declaring that the entirety of the Democratic Party is socialist, even though the vast majority of those in leadership are fighting against anything even moving in that direction, and implying fake things there. He's supporting the conspiracy theory that Democrats support birthing a baby and then killing it, or making the borders entirely open. So that's who he is. He's a guy driven by fake right wing Christian thought, willing to lie about his political opponents. Now, this controversy comes up and he has to respond to it. Now, remember what their argument is, that trackers will take a photo and that's reason enough. Now, this is what he says, before a decision to run, my wife and I made a commitment to follow the Billy Graham rule, which is to avoid any situation that may evoke suspicion or compromise of our marriage. I am sorry Ms. Campbell doesn't share these views, but my decision was out of respect for my wife. So there, it does not seem to be about a tracker taking down their campaign. It seems to be an entirely internal thing to their marriage, where Miss Campbell, who is so focused on her being able to have a career as a journalist, doesn't understand that this is about him and his wife, who have a relationship that is so tenuous, so fragile, that if he were to be alone for even one night with a professional woman pursuing her career, that might tumble, not their campaign, but their marriage. And if her chances as a journalist have access to a campaign, an important campaign that could determine who is gonna be the governor of their state, she's run up against, I don't wanna say Gilead, but something akin to American Gilead in 2019. Now, 
It's not enough to make the case that he's just gonna follow the Billy Graham or the Mike Pence rule where you can never be alone with a woman because somehow that's implicitly cheating on your wife. Or you guys just have a relationship that has so little trust that you would automatically assume that they were cheating if they were with someone of the opposite sex. He then goes on the offensive saying, once again, the liberal left is attacking someone for their integrity, professionalism and Christian beliefs. They aren't just attacking me, they're attacking the countless Mississippians who also share these values, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make the case, now I'm not from Mississippi, I'm not sure I've ever been there. I don't think the majority of Mississippians believe that if you're married, you're not allowed to be alone with someone of the opposite sex. I think that that is a slur against good thinking Mississippians who are stronger than that emotionally and psychologically in their relationships. And look at that, he says the liberal left is attacking someone for their integrity, professionalism and Christian beliefs. This is not a Christian belief. Now it's a belief that some Christians have, but it's not like Jesus was the Sermon on the Mount was about Hey, everybody, don't stand too close. Hey, hey, you're, you're next to a woman, back up, get back. That's not what he was really talking about. Integrity, professionalism, she has integrity, she has professionalism. As a professional journalist, you don't care about that. You don't care about that at all. Your religious beliefs are not just about you and your relationship. They're not rights that you should have, they're about things that you should exercise on other people, literally banning them from covering your candidacy if they have committed the sin of having a vagina. That's what it is, there's no, there's no integrity there. You're literally the only person in this story without any integrity. And yet, of course, he's going to go on the attack and he continues. As I anticipated, the liberal left lost their minds over the fact I chose not to be alone with another woman. They can't believe that even in 2019, someone still values their relationship with their wife and upholds their Christian faith. Look, he's married, so technically he's got more relationship cred than I do, but I'm engaged now. And if I thought the only way that I could value my fiance was to literally never be alone with a woman, that's trouble. That's trouble for my marriage, that's trouble for me, that's trouble for my mental state. Right now, Edwin, thank you for being a man, because if you were a woman right now, I would be disrespecting my fiance. There are some women in the control room right now. Skip, get between me and them, I wanna show respect to my wife. Now, fiance, I understand that some people are gonna find this to be offensive, everything that I'm saying, that I'm not being, I'm not being compassionate enough. But the thing is, again, we're not talking about something that is about you or your relationship. That's what they want to pitch it as. But when you're banning people from doing their job, when you're literally blocking people from knowing what's going on in your political candidacy, not in your attempt to become a pastor, but your attempt to become the governor of a state, that has nothing to do with your religion. It has nothing to do with your relationship. It has everything to do with you thinking that democracy and media access is contingent on whatever you want it to be in that particular moment. And it's not. That's not what American democracy is about. We are not a religious state and our media access is not dependent on you thinking that it fits in with whatever particular sect of religion you happen to be a part of. If you want to practice that in your own relationship, you can do that. I'm worried for you, but you could do that. That's your right as an American. But when you start saying that Larison Campbell can't do her job, then I have to do my job, which is attack you and probably try to stop you from getting a new job as the governor of Mississippi. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.